I'm driven by the fact that I believe there's no obstacle that can't be overcome. And there's so many obstacles that are put in our way just walking around as an Aboriginal person. And to change people's view of Aboriginal people, I think we are very powerful people. I think we're smart people. I think we're beautiful people and, and really big contributors to Canada and the world. We are very proud to be an Aboriginal company. We're very proud to be in the top 1% of all Manitoba companies and to be the only First Nations company in that arena. 95% of the people in our head office are Aboriginal. We are proud of who we are, we know who we are, and we're leveraging and bringing along our people and we're creating a much better future for our children and our children's children. I I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you there was obstacles put in our path almost every day. And I'm sure in the past of many Aboriginal people, but to face them, challenge them and overcome them and to persevere is very empowering. And this type of award is recognition that we're on the right path. The most important thing I've ever learned is that I'm an Aboriginal person and that I'm the product of the very strongest of the strong. And what I mean by that is many Aboriginal people have, are, are not here today because of all of the challenges and adversity that we've had going all the way back through history. So to be here today in the 20th century shows that we're really the product of the best of the best. And I'm proud of that. A very fundamental part of me growing up is uh, I was born with a uh, paralyzed left arm. So I had to learn to do things in my own unique way. And I think that was a, uh, a, a big plus in my own life because it gave me self-confidence and the determination that I could solve problems, I could find a way, I could find a solution. Government policy or the lack of policy has affected my whole career while I work for the Department of Indian Affairs and serving First Nation community. Um, many of the lack of policies had First Nations being delivered lower or no standard of service or equal health and safety issues that non-native communities enjoyed. This was a, a huge part of my career on trying to develop the codes, the standards, the policies and the entitlement that were equal to other Canadians. My role in life was uh, to lead the way in science and engineering for Aboriginal community, for Aboriginal youth, and to add to the wealth of the profession. When I made the decision to go into journalism, it was still the 1970s. At that point, there were hardly any women in media. There were certainly no minorities. I was the first Aboriginal person in Canada to work in a mainstream newsroom on television. People actually said to me, you'll never, you'll never make it as a journalist. Nobody wants to watch an Indian on TV. Our stories, Aboriginal stories, were not of importance. And over the years, because of work done by me and all sorts of other people, they are important. And including our voice is absolutely necessary. For years and years and years, I have been trying to tell people Get your voice, find your voice, say what needs to be said. And I've been doing it through the media. So receiving this award for me is a recognition that other people have said, it's important for you to find your voice. Our traditions, our culture, our languages are something to be proud of and something that we should share. And in terms of media, it's important to me because I'm able to present Aboriginal people the way we are rather than the way the media so often and wrongly portrays us.